Steve. It's EMBN showtime. It is. I'm excited. Do you know why I'm excited today? Because we're talking about the new Uno Icky and fun pedals have come on board at EMBN. Yeah, absolutely. And also on today's show, we've got a fantastic new bike from Decathlon. Uno Icky. I love the look of this bike, Steve. Don't love the name. Icky? That sounds <laughs> gross. Well, icky does exactly mean revolting, but you're dead right. I think this is arguably one of the best looking e-mounted bikes it's on so the market. Cool. Oh, it's, it's pretty. I mean, I mean Cesar Rojo, who's the founder of Uno Bikes in Barcelona. He's Cesar Rojo. Sorry, sorry, Cesar Rojo. Uh, he took me for some fantastic tapas once. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 160, 170 mil travel, 29, 27.5. Um, TQ motor, the bike weighs in at around about 18, 19 kilos. Um, the, the icky thing, the icky means revolting, but also it's a Japanese character, right? Yeah, in a manga, cartoon, comic series, I think. But I, I, we'll have to find out what the icky bit of it is. But it, like we said, it's the one thing it isn't is icky. It comes in the factory and the race builds. Mm -hmm. um, they all look wonderful. It's yeah. a lovely looking bike. Interesting battery capacity on these bikes. Like I mentioned, it's the TQ HPR 50 motor uh, with 15 newton meters of torque. A 520 watt hour battery in the down tube or a 160 watt hour range extender. A uh, couple of numbers for you. C2 Bangle 77, Head to Bangle 64. Now the price is marked on these two bikes. Mm. Um, the Icky Race, 10,195 pounds. Yeah. Uh, or the Icky Factory, £12,795. It's weights, up there. Yeah, the weights, Icky Factory, 18.5, and Icky Race, 19 kilos. Um, reach on the S2 bike is 470 mil, but in terms of numbers, they're pretty big, pretty big mm. numbers, isn't they, mm. in terms of prices. They, um, are. they are. But I guess that's what you pay for something... You know, we talk about boutique in the mountain bike world. I think this is a truly boutique product. Yeah. And I think if you had one of these, you'll quite likely be one of the few people that do have one of these yeah. bikes. Yeah, I feel like this is one uh, of the bikes you'll look back on in 10 years and it'll be a distinctive look even then. You know, it's, it's a really crisp silhouette. It's really uh, different and unique and I, I really like it. Okay, changing from a boutique bike to uh, something more affordable. This is a new Decathlon e EXPL 700. Uh, a Brose motor, it's a hardtail bike, 29 inch wheels, uh, 630 watt hour battery, 130 mil travel up front. Comes with a seat dropper. Now, I do believe that Decathlon really have been stepping it up over the years yeah. with the product that they deliver. And, you know, you're looking at this bike is 21 kilos. Can I it, tell you what I love about it? What's that? Two and a half grand. Exactly. Two and a half grand. Look, exactly. It's, it's only three kilos heavier than that Uno we were just looking at. And it's. Well, you're out there on a great bike. Arguably, for good money. arguably less than that. And you know what? What's more than that, Mart, is that if mm. you've got a, you know a fire road climb or even a techie single track climb, mm. that decathlon will get up that hill almost as good mm. as the twelve thousand pound Uno. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I gotta be honest. I feel like if you get on a two and a half grand e bike these days, and you haven't ridden one yet, you're gonna be blown away with Absolutely. what these bikes can do. It's only once you start riding these much more expensive bikes that you're gonna have something to relate back down to. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't, this is gonna be an amazing bike. And and folks, if you've not bought your first e-mountain bike or you're going from mountain biking to e-mountain biking, I guarantee you the adventures you will go on are off the charts. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. And that's a fantastic bike to start uh, that journey. Here's some really good news, Steve. Mm -hmm. Fun news. Fun new <laughs> partner, pedal partner on yeah. the channel. Yeah, amazing. Do, it is amazing. They do both uh, flat and clipping pedals in various different styles and price points. Um, I have been coerced into trying some clips out. I have. It's taken me four years. This could be the year when I rip on my money where my mouth is and try to. Because I, I think, I mean, what about yourself? I think it's great to be able to be the master of both, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I think both things depends which way you're coming at it. 
you learn something new. Mm -hmm. Whether you're coming from flats to clips or clips to flats, you learn something new and your riding develops, so it's really useful. Um, and, and like you say, we've got a great range of pedals. We've got the Fundamental, we've got the Python, mm -hmm. got the Ripper. Yeah. Um, and there's also, also got the Mamba. The Mamba, yeah. Now, folks, there is actually a competition where you can win one of eight pairs of Fun pedal, pedals. And the question is, make sure I get this right, um, Fun Mamba pedals have both a single-sided and double-sided clip inversion. True or false? Mm. You get that question right and you get some uh, fun pedals heading your way. We're not giving away the answer here, are we? No, it's We're not, not here. We're not, because no. the members are not here. No. Uh, fun pedals, Mart. I mean, I've got, I remember when I rode Sam Hill's bike in 2007, his Iron Horse Sunday, when he was on fun. I think he was on fun bars and stem that as well. A, that's a very good endorsement. It's not bad, if is it? If you're going to have a pedal endorsement, Sam it's Hill's bad, is it? probably the one. So folks, we are super excited to announce this new partnership. So these will be on our bikes uh, from now. Good luck with the competition. Where in the world? I'm trying out that intro. I'm not sure it's, if it's like going it. to last. So let's get something straight. Are dogs allowed in the bike vault? Yes. Well, yes, and this isn't the bike vault. This isn't the bike vault, which yeah. means the dogs are allowed. I'd like to know the name of this little dog, this little puppy. Have you got a dog, Mart? I have Eddie, the little cocker spaniel, and I'm in love with him. I, I love him so much. Love it's to pathetic. have a dog. It's pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Ingram Valley in the Cheviots, Northumberland. Look at this next shot, Mart. This is um, this is on Helvellyn. Cool. Look at that. Helvellyn is a hell of a place. Um, oh, that is a hell of a interesting, place. Interesting wow. thing about e bike riding is getting your route finding right and also knowing which way to go. Because mm. if with Helvellyn, if you live in the UK, it's one of the highest mountains in England. If you do Helvellyn in a clockwise direction, absolute disaster because it's got loads of steps on it. Oh, no. Do Helvellyn in an anti clockwise uh, direction. It's more of a gradual approach and you can ride down the steps at the end. So it might look, you know, a fantastic sunset, but that could be, that could have been a disaster if it was um, running in the wrong direction. But a Anyhow, beautiful looking ride. Chris, thanks for sending Helvellyn in. It's very yeah. nice. Uh, and another shot of Helvellyn. Chris coming down it, I think. Oh yeah, look I, at that. Uh, here's oh, here's one for you. I've cleaned that on the knee bike. What, up that track? True stories, on, wow. it's on film. Very good. And uh, next up, up in Dayton, Nevada. Look, Look at that. Are these the first horses in, the, in where in the world? Donald. I mean, I really love this shot. Uh, I love the horses and the spectacular location is perfect for this segment of the show. But I just want to raise a note um, on the dubious choice of stem. Oh, bright orange. This goes with the horses. Yeah, but you can't get them to follow you around everywhere, can uh, you? Actually, I've got a book, you know, I've got, I got a book to give you, Mart. Uh, mm. Cormac McCarthy, All the Pretty Horses. Remind me to send it to you later. Folks, thanks so much for sending your uh, submissions to uh, Cool Places, because I think they are super cool. Hang on a minute, is it called Cool Places or Where in the World? Make your mind up. Cool Places? I didn't, did I say Where in the World? I did at the start. Cool Places! <laughs> Work in progress. Feedback time. Steve, can I grill you with some questions from yeah, our yeah, viewers yeah, out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first one's coming from, a uh, question coming from having watched the video Mid Assist versus Full Power E-Bike video um, from Ken Juro. And he's asking, well, basically, he's stating and then asking, wow, what is that location? Where was uh, it? It's yeah, well, it's pretty simple. It's in uh, Blyne Fistinio, which is in North Wales. Um, it's a great place. It's a fantastic place. It's actually home to where the Don shot a wheel video recently. Uh, but that's a different location. That is a location called Antirstinio, which is a trail centre. It's got a cafe. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually did my first ride on a mountain bike back from my injury at Antirstinio. That was... That's yes! The spot. Oh, and there's a thing for you, is that Martin was uh, launched off the top of Antirstinio. Go away. And this comes from Chris Ackery, who went, oh, hack. Who's going to catch him at the bottom? Well, Chris and, Ackrick. Yeah, but you answer. didn't tell him. He literally had to ride ahead of you. Yeah, to be honest though, if you're pushing someone off a mountain, who else is going to catch him at the bottom? Obviously. Yeah, but you need to tell them this. 
Well, anyway, Martin season. Ashton did this to me just for Christmas, and I was very, very cross. Weren't you? I you was overreacted. Not. No, you I'm overreacted. not. Still living. Anyway, Antistinia, a fantastic place. Yeah. Um, and that particular bike, I did upgrade to an e bike. I just remembered. did. You That's did. what I did. did. Same bike. Next question is from my photos. Uh, are you all using tubeless and why? Oh, that's interesting because he's basically just bought a new bike, it's got tubeless tyres, and he's wondering, is that still the way forward? Are you on tubeless? Um, I've got inserts. I'm tubeless with inserts. A lot of inserts do, in my bikes. Do I ride tubeless? Stuff anything in there you I, can. Do you know what? I do. I run, run Petey's tubeless in all my bikes. Yeah. I have not had a puncture yet. My, my downfall is having a puncture, sticking a tube in and forgetting to go back to tubeless. Yeah. Uh, final question Very is uh, on our best single track uh, video in the world. John Jones, 101, asked uh, one amazing spot. How about some details? How much battery was left? Start and finish points. Start point was Aseglio, which is a village to the west of Cuneo. Beautiful uh, place. It's a loop, actually. It's a loop. Hence, we started and we ended back at the, the uh, cafe. No battery left. That's a 750 watt hour battery. Actually, no. a 900 watt hour battery in AD's uh, CF8. But um, was it like a real only just made it moment? It, it did only just make it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but guarantee you an incredible place to visit if you want to stay there. I uh, recommend the village of Marmora. It's got uh, trail guides. It's got food. It's got uh, bike storage. Just absolutely off the charts. Uh, folks, thanks so much for your feedback. Uh, uh, more than happy to get involved, especially with locations and also bikes and product. Yeah, you got a question or anything that you want to ask us or want to talk about in the comment section down below, we'll take a look. It could be on next week's show, Steve. Mark, I genuinely mean it. If there's literally, you know, we don't test bikes on EMBM, that doesn't mean to say I can actually ask answer any question that you pose to us. Uh, about, you know, pretty any much bike, motor, battery, controls, displays, you name it. So, yeah, Kim coming. Archive time, Steve. You're going <laughs> to love this. What is it? What is You're going to love this. Go on. Well, I mean, you've been going now since December 2017. We. We as a group. <laughs> but you, Steve, as, a, as an entity... <laughs> Pushing this thing forward is EMBN. Uh, it's really interesting. Let's have a quick look, because I've got a few things to say after we've had a look. A little look at the first actual full um, video on EMBN. E-bikes, very cool, but why would I choose to ride an e-mountain bike? Well, I think freedom more than anything. Um, E-biking, I think it mixes trail and downhill really well. If you're kind of more gravity orientated, then it takes away your reliance on a chairlift or a smelly, worn out uplift van. I think if you're a trail rider, then the trails become even more flowy. <laughs> you look great. Oh, I love that. I love that. But oh, what I think is really interesting yeah. is, how, just think over that time, how the uh, opinion on e-bikes have changed since that time. It's amazing. Well, yeah, 2017, December 2017, we went to Alicante, uh, big team of us, the Don. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the bikes and the kit and the tech and people's attitudes has changed actually. A lot, it a has lot, changed. Yeah. It's now like I think more in during that time, I think lockdown was was the moment when, you know, you saw my local trail sending went from like e-bikes being the minority to being them being the majority. And mm. I think, you know, Jack will back me up on that and what we've seen. Do you know what? I, I, something sticks in my mind. I remember doing the EMVN show number 10, and you said to me, I said, crikey, I've done 10 shows. And he literally turned around to me and went, I've done like 500. <laughs> <laughs> I don't never, I'll never forget that moment in time. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been, yeah, we've covered up. We've been in some fantastic places in, in, in the last six years. So, uh, But I yeah. think the attitude's changing is the most remarkable remarkable steps forward is that now, at, at that point, I remember it was very, it, people had, a, little bit stuffiness about e-bikes whereas now it's very much accepted and and embraced by mountain bikers. I'll go general. so far as to say even within Play Sports Network there mm. were probably people's opinions on e-mountain bikes which they had yeah. which is which is totally fine um, but I think now yeah I think even everyone within this company are like yeah well that's great mm. and like everyone's you know you've gone on a ride and everyone's like more than happy to go and ride an e-bike and um, yeah good times and uh, really happy to be part of it. I'm fun to see you looking so young as well. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do the bike vault? Yeah, let's do that. 
Bike vault time, Steve. Rhea Mudgard. Mm. Rhea Mudgard from Arthur is Mondraker Crafty XR and Glen Tress. Rear mud guard, what do we think, Steve? I'm nice. going for it! I'm going for it! Really? I'm going for the rear mud To hell with it! I'm going for the rear mud guard. It is time now. It is time that somebody designed a decent rear mud guard. Yeah, that one doesn't look too That's bad. That's not actually. too it's quite, bad. It's quite aggro. I quite Jacko, like it. That's not bad, is it? For a rear mud guard. Nah. What do you mean no? I think it's nice, Steve. I it's think... nice. Oh. We can't. That's nice. I, I, Jack had come over and I think we need to revisit there. this. I think we need to revisit the rear mud guard. Okay. Arthur, you've really you've created a debate. We appreciate it. It's nice. Uh, Miguel, Miguel's uh, Giant Rain E Plus in Portugal. It showcases the bike, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, it's funny how he's got it stood in that water. It looks like it's got flat tires. <laughs> but it's a cool shot. Cool shot. And? Very cool shot, actually. How cool. Hey, and look, it's got a rear mud guard. It's got a rear mud guard. Mm, that's quite stealthy, that one. Go on then. It's nice. And, ooh, is this an old Christ? This is what Sam's is white E160 RS. Mm, um, sloppy muck muck. Yeah. Oh, do you remember the show? What was that kid's show in the morning? Something muck muck, the Dick and Dom show, and it had yeah. something muck muck in it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to be taken off air. Uh, Anyhow, we're not taking this off air. This is sloppy muck muck. I feel like we could take it off air. <laughs> Maybe we should. Come on. It's I think it's super nice. That's not super nice. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Sorry. It's nice. It's, it's a bike. It's nice, Sam. Okay. Right. Alexander, uh, Polygon in Col Polygon Colossus in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. 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 <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut. The thing is, it is Connecticut, isn't it? It is Connecticut. It is yes. Connecticut. Yeah, but Connecticut. Um, it's Connecticut. I love it. Connecticut. Connect cut. Connect to cut. Polygon. <laughs> Come on. I'd say that is. I've got to be honest, Steve. It's another nice. It's another nice. Um, and that's. Right. There's no super nices this week. Fair dues. That's all right. That's all bikes fine. are nice. It's, it's great. It's fine. Don't, you don't need to feel bad you about don't it. Have I don't to be feel. Super Martin, I don't yeah. feel. It's fine. It's yeah. totally I fine. I really appreciate it. Alexander. Right. Thanks for sending that last one in. Maybe it's super nice next week. All of you for sending your photographs in. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I just, like going back to the last, you know, the last talk about the show six years ago, I think I think the level of of shots the bike vault over the years mm. have improved. I mean the bikes have improved, everything's improved. It's just super nice. Feeling social? Feeling very social. Let's do it then. Uh, getting social. Um, what about this on Yamaha? <laughs> You're excited about this, I am you? insanely excited about this. I've yeah. got to tell you. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan Villapota. Villapota. Um, Supercross star on an e-bike. One, right one of the finest two-wheel uh, bike riders ever. I'm yeah. sure you'll agree with that. On um, motocross bikes, for sure. On motocross bikes, for sure. I'll never forget the film which Clay Porter did, uh, Road to Road to Recovery. Uh, beautifully shot, if you've not seen it. It's a um, fantastic uh, video. But Villapota on a Yamaha e-bike. Yeah. We'll like a bit of that. Maybe see him on EMBN at some point. I That'd mean, can, lovely, can you it? imagine? I, I mean, look at all these motorcyclists that ride e-bikes. We've got right. um, Tony Bow rides yeah, a Specialized. Tony Bow. I love Roxon's Canyon. Roxon's Canyon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. I mean, it's what about his riding style? Roxon's? No, um, Villapoto is on an e-bike. He's super crossed, isn't he? He's gone and gone like he's bridged himself out there. So he's like his legs are doing all the work, and he's you know he's used to a heavier thing, moves so, it in a different way. It's not the same thing. I remember speaking to uh, Akrig about this. Yeah, Akrig, he says he can't do jumps. He can't do you know the, the same way as like say Laurie he, Greenland. Uh, for a trials rider, Chris has actually got pretty good riding style. But generally, yeah, trials riders <laughs> tend to get a bit. I mean, I mean, Danny you tend McCaskill, to be able to see it, you know, that they Danny are Danny McCaskill's a, a bit like, uh, why? Yeah. It's like they're like, it's like they're like 50. Yeah, you can accomplish good things, but it won't necessarily look beautiful. But, <laughs> you know, that's trials riding. It, it, Weird, it, isn't it? The, the good thing about trials, though, is that you get a bit of a stiff riding style, but it basically means you can do everything. You can. So, you know, it's good and bad to it. Yeah. Uh, next up, we spotted Rich. Rich and Blake out filming. Uh, oh, this is a video which they were Coming shooting. Coming up on EMBN. No, it's actually been out, actually. And if you've not seen it, it's a video where they ride up this insanely difficult, well, they said it was difficult, uh, rock garden in Cheddar. Cheddar. Yeah, they're not very good, though. Wow. Yeah, but it's worth a watch. That's it from the social side of things. Uh, we've actually got one more item, and that is a special guest, uh, which has come to the EMBN show at your request. So, with the magic of TV, 
Hang on, this is the same place. It is, but it's not. This is the special guest, folks. This is the giant stance, which I drowned in a river in North Wales. Submerged it. Submerged it up to here. Uh, totally legit. Um, as I said in the video, please, please do not do this at home because e-bikes are not meant to be drowned. <laughs> um, obviously, I think motorcycles, bicycles, anything, I'm pretty sure some kind of moisture will find its way into the motor at yeah, some especially point. Especially if you treat it like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, like a car, maybe some bit, bit of moisture getting into the engine somehow. It, it will happen, so we're not, we're not saying that it doesn't, and that, that's, that's for sure. But um, a lot of you said, actually, that this bike would never work again. Now, it is now the 3rd of January. This is a true story. I hate to admit this, but I did it just to see. I've literally left it outside for months. <laughs> Just to see if it would still work. Just to see if it's... Jack's laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> uh, and, well, here it is. I'm going to lean it over, Mark, right? And um, this is the on button here. So this is totally legit, as was the river. So let's have a look here. <laughs> there you go. It's switched on again. So after a month of being left out in the rain, snow and ice it still works so i think that is a great testament to the what should we call it the weatherproof weatherproofness of e-mountain bikes so um amazing yeah and also thanks to giant actually for letting us do that test so even yeah. though we don't do tests on emben i think that is possibly the best test of all yeah it's a good guess but it's quiet though huh it's quiet though what's quiet as a guest Amazing, that bike was literally... It is unreal, isn't it? Unreal. Yeah, no one believes you, but that bike's... And I tell you what, I really love the raw alley finish of that bike. It's really cool. Actually. Three and a half thousand euros. It's very, very nice. Very um, nice. That's it for this week's show. Thanks for joining us. Um, now, coming up on the channel this week, actually, we've got a very important video, which I feel insanely strongly about. Ooh. And that is old versus new, because... There's lots of chat in the industry about things becoming obsolete. Yeah. Right? The thing is, right, uh, we, I, we look at the Canyon Spectral on from five, six years ago. Actually, me and Jack went to the south of France to film this very bike, and we compare it against the new Canyon Spectral on, and the old Spectral on is still a fantastic bike. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a fantastic bike. So this whole idea that, oh, we can't upgrade, which means it's out of date and it's not so good, that's to I mean, it's partly true, obviously, mm. but that old Canyon is still a fantastic bike. So I go into great detail about the comparison about the old Spectral versus the new Spectral, the spec, the prices, the geometry, blah, blah, blah. So that's coming up on the channel on Friday. Thanks for joining us this week. Great to see Martin Ashton on fine form, and we'll see you next week.